Matthew 24, starting at verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will the sign of your coming be at the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So, when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress, unequaled, from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At this time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false prophets and false messiahs will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out, or he, here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east and is visible, even in the west, so it will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then all peoples of the earth will moan and when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather this elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, that you know 
that it is near right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. Tomorrow might not be certain, but we know that he's coming back, and that's the passage that we're going to look at today. Um, And the the heading on it in the Bible says, Signs of the End of the Age. And I don't want us to think, we will look at that a little bit, but sometimes I'm not sure if those are really always the most helpful things to say. Because I think there's a whole lot more than just the signs of the end of the age that this passage is about. And uh, if we just look at that, it can actually almost seem a little bit miserable and a little bit hopeless and a little bit horrible because it really is that. Um, But there there are little bits in there that give us that hope and that assurance to keep going. And when I was thinking about today, I was just thinking back over the last few years because sometimes I think we... Things happen in the world, don't they? And and right now, the focus is on Israel and Palestine and Gaza and the conflict. And it's almost like we've forgotten that there's been a war going on for 18 months into the second year in the Ukraine with Russia. And have we forgotten about earthquakes that happened in Turkey and was it Libya or, you know, and and floods. We've we've been dealing with floods here recently too. And it's it's almost like something new happens and we forget what has, has been going on. And yet these are all things that we're told that will happen. And the one thing that I I realised when I went back and and kind of tried to put together what I'd been thinking and and looking at, and I'd I'd written down several times all the way through, was watch out, be alert, and be ready. And I think that's what this is all about. This is Jesus has been into the temple. He's been into the place where the Jews had put a lot of emphasis, a lot of the Jewish life centred around the temple. Their actions, their priests, their festivals, their sacrifices, it all revolved around the temple. And, And we know that Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple because they were using it for the wrong purposes. And... Jesus had just been in the temple and it, it, it's quite a hard thing to see because he says in, in verse two, uh, the last two verses of the previous chapter, look, your house is left to you desolate for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And he's just, he's just gone through all these things about woe you Pharisees and, and really, really hard truths that he was telling religious people. And, and as he walked out, he said, you're not going to see me again. He turned his back on the temple and walked out and said, that's it, you won't see me again. Uh, until and then they go away and the disciples come to him and say you know look at the look at the buildings look at this temple and Jesus is saying but you know do you see these things do you see this temple do you see these things they are things and then he says something really shocking to them He says, I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Wow. I don't know what they must have thought when they heard that. What did they think when Jesus said that? They'd been looking towards the temple. that, That was where their place and their hope was as Jewish people. And then suddenly, all that shattered. Um, 
And so what are they going to do? It, it doesn't bode very well. Um, and so then he says, they, they say rather, they ask the question then, well, okay, uh, but what are the signs that, that all this is going to, what are the signs that you're going to come back? When will it happen? How will it happen? Uh, where are we? Let me read it instead. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? When will the temple be, de- when, when is this going to be destroyed? When is it no stone going to be left there? And what will be the sign of that? What will be the sign of the coming of the age? And I, and I thought, you know, during Jesus' time, people asked about signs, didn't they? They, they, they were asking about signs, and Jesus said on one occasion, the only sign that you'll get is the one of Jonah. Uh, and, and people were always looking for something to see what was going to happen. What was the sign? What was the sign? Um, and it's not always about signs, is it? When is it going to happen? What are the signs? And I didn't write them down, but there, there are verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and John chapter 2 uh, where it talks about wanting signs. And I think we all know one sign that Jesus gave very early on at the beginning. He, he put a sign in the sky, didn't he? As a promise, he put a rainbow there, a sign for people to see that God is in control, even when things look like they're out of control. The temple was destroyed, we know that. So that actually did happen. And it was not long after Jesus died, was it? It was only about 40 years. And, and when I was looking at this, apparently... It was only completed for seven years. So they, it was finished, and then seven years later, the Romans came in and destroyed it. I just found that quite challenging to think, you know, here were people looking at a building, um, putting a lot of emphasis on it. We, 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 can, we can so easily get deceived and distracted into things that aren't really important. And it was almost, I think, that the building was becoming more important than the person they were there to worship. Um, and, and it's not about buildings, is it? It's about the person that we go to worship. And it was also, you know... The temple and all that happened was there until Jesus came. Jesus came to fulfill what they were looking for. And so all all that excuse me, all that was all that happened before was no longer necessary. Jesus himself was there. And and that was all that mattered. Um, so Looking at this, watch out, be alert. What does he say in verse 5? This is really, I'm struggling with this because I'm kind of reading around it. Verse, I can't kind of, my eyes don't go far enough that way. What does he say in verse 5? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. There are several things. Don't be be deceived. Don't be deceived by prophets. So he says, many will be claiming, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. Don't be deceived by what you hear. In verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And I think we know that. Even we are seeing that in our day. But this has been happening since the time that Jesus spoke these words. Because he says, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. And I think when today when we see all this stuff happening, it can just make us feel really, really hopeless. The world is in just a really, really awful place place 
But Jesus said these things are going to happen. He said, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Such things must happen and then. The end, but the end is still to come. This is just the beginning. Um, he goes on in verse 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. I haven't had children, but I know a number of ladies here have, and those who've got any medical background also will know, I think, that, that when that time is, is, is coming, you know, the, there's several months in the process, isn't there, before that birth happens. But when, it, when that time is getting nearer, there can come a point where maybe there's this feeling of this baby's coming, and then nothing happens. I think they call it the Braxton Hicks. Some people, so there's, there's a few nods around. Maybe some of you have experienced it. Um, and it doesn't happen. You think this birth's coming. And, and there's all this effort. And then suddenly, the, and then nothing. And, and these things are happening here. And Jesus is saying, but, you know, this is not the end. There's, there, there's more to come. There's more to come. And, and this feeling of hopelessness, I, I just wrote down a few things when I was thinking about this. And I know it might all seem a bit heavy and a bit hard and a bit, well, where do we go? But, but this, is, this is where we're at and where people were at, but it is not the end. Um, it feels hopeless. The world is in a terrible state. The world is full of wickedness. Hatred, which we hear about hate crime more and more and more and more. Betrayal, we hear about that. The, another thing that I found really, really challenging, and we'll come to that in a little bit, was turning away. People who have known the Lord, who've loved the Lord, who've followed him, are going to turn away. I found that quite shocking. But I also thought, but I need to be alert myself. Because it says many will turn away. I, I, I could be one of them. So I really need to be alert. I really need to watch. I really need to pray. Um, what else does it talk about? Deception. People deceiving each other. Coldness of heart. I've already mentioned wars, rumours of wars, nation being against nation, famine, earthquake. I mean, uh, this is really horrible, depressing, hopeless stuff that makes us lose heart if that's all we see and all we think about. But that's not all there is. There's more to, there's more to life than that. So watch out. Be alert. Watch out. Watch what you see. Watch what you hear. Watch what happens to you. Verse 9. Then you will be handed over and put to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. So watch out what happens to you. Things are not always going to be easy. Watch out what many people will do. What will happen to many people, I've just mentioned it. At that time, many will turn away from the faith. And, and we're wanting people to come to faith. We want to see people saved. We want to see people living in hope, as we sang about, facing tomorrow with Jesus. But here, Jesus himself says many will turn away and, and betray and hate each other. And we, we look at that and we can say, yeah, that's what's happening in the world at large. But, but this is Jesus talking about people of faith. And, and that is, I found that quite shocking too, that he's talking about people of faith. Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. We really, really need to guard our hearts. We really, really 
need to be in a place where we're faithful, where we hide God's word in our hearts, where, as like Flo mentioned, Robert is just, just eating up all that's there in the Bible. That's where we find our strength. That's where we find our hope. That's where we have the confidence and the hope for the future. And we need to hold on to that. We need to keep that fellowship of encouraging each other. Not just encouraging each other, admonishing each other. That means kind of like challenging each other. Because I think if we were all just lovely, lovely, and oh, no, 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 that, that, that's not really helpful. Because there are times when I mess up. There are times when I get it wrong. And I don't like being told that. As kids, we don't like being told <laughs> When we're at school, if we've made a mistake, we don't like being told that we've got it wrong because we like to think we know. But we don't. And we do need teachers and we do need people to help us and to support us. I'm getting sidetracked, so I'll carry on. Um, But don't be deceived. It's it's just hopeless. I've just read verses, verse 6. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See to it that you're not alarmed. Verse 7, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Verse 9, you'll be handed over and persecuted. And it goes on to verse 11, there'll be false prophets. Many people will be deceived. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. People's hearts have grown cold because of the wickedness and we live in a wicked world. But, and I always like this, God's word is so encouraging. It, 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 it doesn't paint a lovely picture of everything being wonderful and everything in the gardens full of roses and we can enjoy life. Yes, we can, but it tells us the truth. But, he who stands firm to the end will be saved. But, there's always, there's always hope there, there's always something to hold on to. There's always something to hold on to. And Jesus is saying, these things are going to happen. Don't be alarmed. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So all these signs, all these things that have been happening, um, are really nothing that we should worry about because he said don't be alarmed we shouldn't be worried about them and if we're looking for for a sign of the end of the age he says the gospel will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come and then he says these words which Take a lot of understanding, and I am not even going to try and attempt to that. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that caused desolation, spoken of through Daniel, through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. And it's, it's, we're not going to go back and look into Daniel. That would take too long right now. But what he's saying is that the things that are going to happen, Daniel has already spoken about. Jesus is just re-emphasizing that and saying, look, you've already heard what's going to happen. But what, what will be the sign of the end is the gospel being preached to all nations. Then the end will come. Many are going to lose heart. Many are going to grow cold. That's really sad. And we need to pray for one another and for the church. But... It says, that's, on the one hand, that's, what, that's what's going to happen. And on the other hand, those that do stand firm should be those who will go out and give testimony. Maybe we don't feel like we can all be preachers. Maybe we don't feel like we can stand up and do things. But we have all got a testimony. We have a testimony time every week. We've all got a testimony that we can share of the good news and the salvation that we have through Jesus because he lives so we have got a testimony so it's very exciting to think that Jesus is coming back it's also very encouraging to know that we 
we will be saved if we stand firm to the end. But it's also very challenging because of the responsibility that I have and we have to share that good news with, with other people that don't know. And, and how is it going to happen? Verse 27 says, For as lightning that comes from, from the east is visible in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Lightning goes from one side of the world to the other. People can see it. And so what, 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 he, what he's saying here is everyone, every single person is going to see. I don't know what that will look like. I don't know how it will be. My little natural mind says, but, you know, but, but we live in one hemisphere and people in the other hemisphere are in, in the dark while we're in the light and vice versa. I don't know. But it will happen and everyone will see. That's what it says. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. He gives lots of other things to say. I'm looking at the time and it's nearly finished. So I will miss out some of the things. But this is what I've written just to, to close my thinking. And, and, and some of the things here. We, it's a huge, huge passage. And, and we're only talking about what's going to happen or what are the things we should be doing before he comes. We haven't got to the latter half of the chapter of when is it going to be. And that's a whole other thought on its own. We don't know, basically, is that. But there are things that we shouldn't be doing um, and the things that, there are things that we should be doing. And, and I think that's just where I'd, I'd want us to finish. And, and we shouldn't be deceived. Don't be deceived by people who might go come around saying, oh, this, and, and we can easily be drawn in by the message of, messages of others. Here he is, out in the desert, or there he is, or, or per, people who prophesy and say, you know, this is going to happen, and then it doesn't happen. Um, there was a man in the last century who said Jesus was going to come back at a certain point and people went and sold their houses and, and everything else and they just waited and it didn't happen. And then it was, oh, well, maybe we got it wrong and the date got changed. So we need to be really, really careful. We don't know. Jesus didn't know. So how on earth can any of us ever know? If Jesus doesn't know, there's no way that we can. What he does tell us is what the world is going to be like before he comes and what we should be doing. So we shouldn't be deceived by prophets or by what we hear or we shouldn't be alarmed by what the world is like. He's told us what it's going to be like. There's going to be wars. There's going to be persecution. People are going to turn away. There's going to be trouble in the church. We shouldn't be alarmed by that. We don't like it, but we shouldn't be alarmed. That's what's going to happen. But... What we should do is we should stand firm and we should have a testimony to share with other people that there is hope. And then I, I because this, I'd written this several times all the way through, I have written in capital letters, be ready, because we don't know. Jesus didn't know when he was going to come. I was hearing this morning about the, fact, the wise and the foolish virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom coming. Uh, and some were ready and some weren't uh, and some of you will know the story I won't go into it but the, the thing was be ready, be prepared be faithful be encouraging one another praying for one another be wise be discerning when people come and say these other words and you're not sure where they come from and watch watch look for his coming don't be looking at the signs but look for him, because that's what, that's what it's all about, is he is coming back. And why? Why be ready? Why be faithful? Why be wise? Why watch? Because we don't know when. And if we're not doing those things, we'll be caught out, and, and, and that will be it. We don't know when he's coming. But we don't know when he's coming, but we do know he will come. 
And because he will come, we need to be ready. We need to be faithful. We need to be wise. We need to watch. And so, let's live expecting his return. Even when we don't know when it is. Let's live expecting it. It's really spoken to me that I don't just get bogged down in this world, but I live my life wanting to see Jesus come back. I want to see him come back. Doesn't mean, oh, I know Jesus is coming back. I don't know when he's coming. So I know he's coming. So I'll just sit and I'll just wait. No, we have a message to share. We have something to give to people. Let's be doing it. Let's be expecting his return, being ready, being faithful, being wise and watching until he comes.